Hello and welcome to the Grumpy Stew Podcast. My name is Dylan, I'm the Grumpy Stew, and this is the podcast for flight attendants. This is episode 43, I think. Something like that. Thanks for listening. And you know what? For once, I actually have a decent show for you. Thought I'd change things up a bit and make something good for once. Or something. So do me a favor. If you like what you hear, subscribe to the Grumpy Stew Podcast on YouTube. And visit thegrumpystew.com for everything Grumpy Stew, including exclusive content and links to all of the Grumpy socials. Be sure to like and share your favorite content that helps me know what you guys like to see and hear, and it grows the audience. And in speaking of exclusive content, from time to time, you might catch me, the grumpy one, on live stream. You can catch those live streams on YouTube and Facebook. Have a moderately mediocre show for you today, which is a step up from the usual garbage. So uh, that's progress, I guess. A pretty cool podcast update you stews might be interested in. Plus my usual rants, raves, and aviation news commentary. All coming up after a message from our sponsor. Are you completely fucking stupid? Do you do stupid shit all day long? Are you constantly saying really stupid shit in front of other people? Are you tired of being laughed at and made fun of for being completely fucking stupid? Well, I have the book for you. Except it's an audio book because you can't read. How to Not Be Completely Fucking Stupid for Morons. Your go-to guide for everything not completely fucking stupid. This audiobook contains useful tips like how to sound smart when you're actually an idiot, how to resist the urge to make that's what she said witticisms at parties, how to avoid toilet humor on a first date, how to avoid walking into poles, signs, and other easily avoided obstacles, how to find the restroom at an airport, and many more useful non-fucking stupid tips in easily accessible and short audio chapters because you have the attention span of a gnat. Get your copy today. Available everywhere audiobooks are sold. Okay, so get this. Yours truly, the grumpy one, will be on an episode of the Thrillist Explorers this month. Most likely on the 11th, November 11th. It's just an interview. It's not like, you know, I'm featured or anything. It's nothing that special. The Thrillist is doing an episode about flight attendants and the bullshit we've been dealing with lately, which is cool of them to highlight the reality of domestic travel in the United States. I think it's been a couple of weeks now. Um, just, I don't know, out of the blue, the producers from Thrillist um, got in touch with me and asked for an interview. Um, frankly, I thought it was a prank. So after checking to make sure that this was like a real thing and these people were real people, and I, I accepted the interview. We set up a time. We talked for about like, I don't know, like an hour, mostly about the challenges of flying and uh, what it's like to be a stew and, you know, what it's like to be in a crash pad and things like that. Um, of course, though, you know, they've seen all the social material and so they've asked me what, <laughs> what a broke dick orbit special is. So if you don't know, the broke dick orbit special is the, the deeply discounted tickets on the web, the internet, you know, the, the web discounters like Orbitz and Expedia, whoever. And it's super, 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 super cheap. And it's intended to fill middle seats in the back. The seats that nobody wants. I give them a special name because these people invariably expect us to rearrange the entire fucking aircraft for them. Even though they didn't pay nearly as much as everybody else. But I digress. So, you know, I have no idea what this interview will sound like. Uh, Will, the producer, made it pretty clear that it would be heavily edited and cut up for time and content. So, I mean... So who knows what it's going to sound like. I don't expect anything nefarious or anything like that. First of all, I'm just flabbergasted that a real producer from an actual professional show reached out. Not some schmuck like me with this goofy little rink-a-dink operation. I have basically no listeners. And I've tried the whole live streaming thing. No one watches. Except for like my mom. And like occasionally my friend Matt. Uh, that's uh, that's about it, really. I have virtually no audience. But on the social media side of things, primarily on Instagram, I have an audience. So most of you Grumpy Stews out there, follow along on social media, which you can easily find on thegrumpystew.com. Shameless plug. All of this is just to say that there could be an audience coming because of 
the exposure from the thrill list. So going forward, I'm going to make an effort to make more audio content in the form of the podcast. I might live stream occasionally. Seriously, if you like this content, if you like the podcast, if you like what I'm doing, let me know. Even if you don't like it, let me know. It's the little things like liking the stuff on YouTube, subscribing to the YouTube channel. It's a Grumpy Stew podcast. You can find it easily. Leaving comments, sharing with your friends. Comments, even if it, there's something you don't like, I'd kind of like to know, sort of, what is not working. I don't do this for me. I do this to be entertaining for you, for all my fellow flight attendants and Grumpy Stews out there. Even the people that aren't flight attendants and just appreciate what we do and are fans of travel. You know, this costs me money. I don't make any money from this. I do this for you. It's not for me. So, you know, help me out. Tell me what you like. Okay, so digression over. I like to thank the Thrillist Explorers for having me on. You can find their show virtually everywhere. Podcasts are available, including Spotify and iHeart.com. Just fucking Google it. You'll find them. Okay, so for those of you that follow me on the Twitter may have seen the series of travel tips I've posted. Some of you listening may not be following the Grumpy Steward on Twitter, but I am at Grumpy Steward on the Twitter. Um, some of you may not be professional stews. Some of you just might be total morons. So I'll uh, share a few tips of the travel variety from a professional, me, to you. Okay, so some of these... Uh, Tips might be considered rude, they might be vulgar, maybe even disgusting. So uh, let's get started with a couple of those. All right, travel tip. It is not within the spirit of the mask mandate to remove your mask for the purpose of gnawing on your fingernails like a fucking mental patient or picking your nose. At least have the common sense to go inside a lavatory and pick your nose. Drill for gold in the lavatory so we don't have to watch you. It's disgusting. Travel tip. Take a shit before your flight, ideally before you arrive at the airport. I'm fairly certain that people that have no qualms about dropping a deuce on a plane all wear thumb rings and have neck tattoos. Travel tip. If you expect to be served, take your fucking headphones off while we're talking to you. It seems to facilitate the asking you what the fuck you want to drink part of the process. Travel tip. Do not openly fart in the plane. Yes, everyone can smell it. We know it's you. And we don't need to know what you ate last night. Some of you might need to reevaluate your dietary choices. For example, beer and brats and cheese. Maybe it's time for a change. Maybe switch it up to like nachos and gin or something. I mean, you're killing me, man. Which leads me to travel tip. Use the fucking restroom before you board the fucking plane. They're literally all over the fucking airport. Use one. I, I promise you, you have time. The plane will not leave in the two seconds it takes to take a leak. I promise. And if you're a commuting flight attendant and you pull this shit, do not be surprised when we give you a hard time about boarding the plane and then taking a leak right in the middle of fucking boarding. You know better. You know better. Don't do that. Travel tip. If your bag is too heavy for you to lift, then it's too heavy for us to lift. You pack it, you rack it. You bring it, you sling it, Granny. It's on you. I'll give you a real honest to Jetway Jesus tip. This is real. This is real. Totally 100% correct and real. If you can't lift it, just tell the gate agent you'd like to check your bag. Just tell them at the gate you want to check your bag. So long as um, you're not over your baggage limit, um, the carry-on. So you, you're allowed by law. One carry-on, one personal item. So that's your bag and like your purse or backpack or something. So as long as you don't have more than two items, you can check your bag for free. Because it's part of your uh, carry-on allowance. They can't charge you for that. And it's convenient. And it's completely free. It goes right to your final destination. You pick it up in the baggage claim. You don't have to drag it. You don't have to sling it. You don't have to lift it. You don't have to ask for help. Nothing. You just check it. Leave it at the plane. Go get it in the baggage claim. Convenient, easy, do it. Travel tip. Do not immediately ask for pill water the second you board the plane. They sell pill water in the airport. You know what they also sell in the airport? Milk for your homely little kids. Your kids, your problem. 
They also sell your precious, gluten-free, vegan, non-soy, non-GMO, locally sourced, shitty, tasteless crap you call snacks. Buy them in the airport. Bring them with you. We ain't got them. Travel tip. Arguing with us isn't going to change the law or company policy just for you. It ain't going to happen. And the overuse, but they did it for me last time, nonsense isn't going to work either. But they did it for me last time. Nice story, Aiden. No one gives a shit. Travel tip. It's not necessary to tell us it's your birthday. That's nice, Jessica. Newsflash. We don't care. And while I'm dishing out free life advice, telling everyone it's your birthday is completely unnecessary. All you've managed to do is not die for a year. You're not special. Take a fucking seat, Jessica. Want someone to throw you a party and be all, Jessica, 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 accomplish something. Accomplish something. Managing to roll out of bed and throw on your rattiest, baggiest pair of dirty sweats you had since college is not an accomplishment. Cure cancer. Solve world hunger. Make the people in West Palm Beach less dickish. Then we'll throw you a fucking party. So there's been yet another incident involving a passenger assaulting a flight attendant. Some not lost his mind and hit a stew, breaking some facial bones, completely unprovoked as usual. And no, it doesn't seem to be mask or alcohol related. This follows other high profile cases in which passengers assaulted crew members. Other serious incidents include multiple instances of people trying to access the flight deck or open emergency exits in flight. These incidences used to be fairly rare, and now they're like a daily occurrence. Just a few days ago, a flight diverted because two passengers got into a scuffle over something petty. The increase in assault on crew members is alarming, but you know what will stop it? I'm telling you, after a couple of these assholes has their skull cracked by rage-filled grumpy stew, this shit will come to a screeching halt. We become targets on board because it's assumed that we're weak and we won't fight back because we're nice people. If you're ever put in this position, fight like hell. Go for the eyes, the throat, the groin. Kick that fuck right in the baby maker. And then sue the shit out of him and his entire fucking useless family just to be petty. A couple of violent passengers coming off the plane on a stretcher sends a fucking message. Not all incidents on board are mask related either. I don't know what it is. But people have decided they can do whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want. Just the other day, I caught a guy drinking his own booze at his seat. He happened to be sitting next to a commuting flight attendant. (laughs) I mean, duh. And that flight attendant brought the behavior to my attention. I can see the empty Tito's bottle in his seat back pocket, and I confiscate it. I'm like, dude, you, you can't be drinking your own booze. It's actual law. It's an actual federal law. Any booze consumed on board must be served by a flight attendant. He goes, okay, sorry, didn't know that. All right, fine. Then she tells me he also smoked his vape right there at his seat. (laughs) I'm like, dude, now I have to do something. I can't just let this go. What the hell is wrong with you? Smoking on a plane has been illegal since like the mid 80s. So now I have to write it up and now I have to get people involved. And this this fucking dumbass, to his credit, he stopped doing it and he apologized. But, you know, I still have to write the goddamn report for free, by the way. I don't appreciate the extra workload. I've caught so many people smoking and drinking their own booze this year. The FAA might as well just start cutting me in on a commission. Usually I catch them because they tried vaping in the lavatory and set off the smoke detector. Your vape will trigger the smoke detector. Smoking the lab is a $4,000 civil penalty. And the FAA takes it pretty fucking seriously. And it's currently a zero-tolerance policy at the FAA. And try tampering with that smoke detector because you think, you know, covering it or whatever is going to somehow stop the vape being detected by the smoke detector. Now, you're wading into criminal territory. You'll be charged with a crime. It's no longer civil. It's criminal. And it's just, you know... Another couple thousand dollars they're going to take out of your ass. That is, after they arrest you and send you on a no-expense paid trip to Destination Fucked, 
where then you will receive a nice brand new soap on the rope. The flight after that one, I bounced a bitch right off of my plane for calling me a douchebag. <laughs> bye bye. Call me names, you're out of here. There's a bit of a story there, but she was being weird and inappropriate from the very moment she brought. I, I think she might have been high off her tits, quite frankly. She was being weird. And before the door was closed, she tried to give herself a five fingered upgrade to first class. We shooed her stupid ass out of first class and back to her seat. During the safety video, I was standing in the aisle by her row. And of course, she's got her mask down on her chin like a freaking face diaper. And she starts asking me about upgrading to first class. And I'm like, okay, you need to wear your mask over your nose and mouth. And unfortunately, it's too late to upgrade. And I explained that, you know, upgrades are handled by the gate agents. Flight attendants are completely out of the process. I can't help you. She drops a mask again and she starts off with the, but, because, you know, she's special. But, but, she's special. Uh, and I'm like, put your mask back on. Like I said, we don't have the ability to upgrade on board. In the future, you just need to handle that at the gate. Drops the mask again. But, 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 you know, she wants to argue. She thinks she's special. And I'm like, put the mask on. You're not getting a free upgrade, period. Don't ask, because now I've lost my patience. And she's like, okay, geez, you don't have to be a douchebag about it. Excuse me? A douchebag? We can go back to the gate and open the door and you can drive to LA, how about that? Oh, what? No, I didn't uh, I didn't call you a douchebag. Those are words I would never say. I have nothing but respect for flight attendants. I would never say something like that. You guys should have heard the way she was talking before we closed the door. She sounds a lot like me, only female and um, worse, I guess. Uh, trashier. I think that's the word I'm looking for. She's pure trash. But now I'm, I'm starting to get angry. Because she's lying to my face about calling me a douchebag and I can't believe the audacity of this idiot. I'm like, really? You're just going to sit there and pretend you didn't just call me a douchebag. And at this point, I'm yelling at her because I'm so fucking pissed. I'm like, you're, you're going to lie to my face. You're looking at me and lying to my face and telling me you didn't call me a douchebag. Like, I'm deaf. Like, all the people around you are also deaf. You can't possibly be serious. Oh, uh, I would never. I have nothing but respect for flight attendants. No, I was raised by a good woman. I would never make use language like that. <laughs> and then she said something derogatory about my mom. <laughs> Seriously. And I'm like, okay, good to go. You want to play games? We'll play some freaking games. We go back to the gate. We crack open the door. The captain's like, I want her off. The gate agent, completely fucking useless. They sent a supervisor down. And she was hesitant to take this idiot off the plane. And I had to threaten again. This is like the third time in, I don't know, a month or two that I've had to threaten to gather my shit and walk off the plane and make them recrew and reboard the, the passengers because I wasn't going to have it if they were going to be on the plane. So ultimately, gate agent took the idiot off the plane. And Miss I Never Used kind of foul language told me to go fuck myself on her way out. So, yeah. But I'm like, oh, I thought you didn't use that kind of language. Ah, so that was fun. Anyway, this has been an episode of the Grumpy Stew Podcast. I hope you enjoyed your podcast experience. Your feedback is valuable and we blah, 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 blah. If you enjoyed this episode, you can let me know by subscribing to the Grumpy Stew Podcast on YouTube and pressing the like button. And feel free to leave your comments. It helps me uh, kind of figure this shit out. And for everything Grumpy Stew, visit thegrumpystew.com. And thanks again for listening. Until next time, see you later.